In the picture on the left, you can see a baby chimpanzee and a human child, and we, oddly enough, seem less smart than primates. In the picture on the right, everything is back in order, but there is a but. If the brain of the primate developed just like the human brain, the poor animal would simply die. Why? I want to know, too. Today I'm going to tell you how brainless creatures do really smart things, why a big brain doesn't make an animal a genius and kills it instead, and what did the parrot say to his owner before he died, and who is the smartest animal in the world. Here we go. Here you can see a human brain, a mouse brain, and a whale brain. Yeah, now try to guess which is which. We don't have the biggest brain but everyone knows that humans are the smartest creatures on the planet. We are so smart that we've even figured out how to measure our own intelligence. But if a whale with its big brain and a mouse pass an IQ test, who would turn out to be the smartest? The whale probably. Nope. In this case, the size doesn't really matter and I'll prove it to you now. I am Mu, a chimpanzee participating in experiments at the Primate Research Institute of Kyoto University, is able to memorize the exact position of nine numbers placed in random order on a screen in just 0.67 seconds. No human could even come close to this result. Moreover, many participants were not just slow. They mixed up the numbers and no amount of practice helped them. It's really very, very difficult. Researchers believe that chimpanzees have an amazing visual memory. In other words, these animals are better at remembering information they see with their eyes. It is possible that this is simply essential to survive in the wild. Okay, let's suppose that chimpanzees with a small brain can beat us. But this is just the beginning. Parrots' brains are clearly smaller than those of chimpanzees. Nevertheless, they can literally talk to humans and have meaningful conversations. The most impressive example of this ability is a gray parrot named Alex, who knows the name of different colors, shapes, and more than 100 English words. And he could use all of this knowledge in a conversation, for example, when Alex was shown an object and asked about its shape, color, or material. The parrot could correctly name it, even when different questions referred to the same object. Alex could still answer them, and he could even talk about objects that he saw for the first time, like these blocks. How many green block? Green block. Yeah. Good parrot to green block. Alex apologized if the researcher got angry. He deliberately gave wrong answers when bored and even understood the concept of the word zero. He died suddenly, though nothing seemed to foretell trouble. The last words Alex said to his human were, you be good, see you tomorrow, I love you. What conclusion can be drawn from this? First of all, parrots are so damn smart. And second, okay, this is not a conclusion but a question. If monkeys have bigger brains, why can't they talk to us like parrots? I mean, with their mouth, the fact is that these small parrots' brain has a large number of neurons. And unlike monkeys, they have more neurons in those areas that are responsible for thought, calculation, calculation, speech, reasoning, and other useful skills. But the structure of the vocal cords, the tongue, and all that is also very important. Wait a second. If a parrot is smarter than a monkey and a monkey is smarter than a person, that means I'm dumber than a bird. <laughs> it's not that bad. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video? Yes. The monkey brain is indeed more developed than the human brain, but that's only true for toddlers. Up until about four years of age, chimpanzees are ahead of us in terms of logic, reaction, speed, and everything else. But here's the good news. According to some scientists, primates inherit their intelligence while humans can develop theirs over the course of their lives. That's why people are so slow in early childhood. Human and monkey babies were tested several times at different times and in different ways. For example, they watched to see how quickly they would realize that their parent was hiding behind a screen. Guess who needed more time to solve this simple task? The monkeys reacted more vigorously to tickling, and overall they were much more active. The human baby didn't react at all when a hat was put on its head, although the baby chimp immediately took it off. Well, maybe he just liked hats. Okay, we no more or less understand the mind of a primate because you can always compare it to the human mind. But parrots and other animals, it's not so simple with them. Today, there are various intelligence tests, some of which you can even try on monkeys. But it's one thing when a person takes the test and quite another when an octopus does. Try putting it in front of a computer and asking it to answer several questions. Yeah, like it'd listen to you.
Meanwhile, Octopi are like a pirate chest full of amazing abilities and with tentacles. A pirate chest with tentacles. Anyway, that's not what this is about. Octopi are able to calculate their body dimensions perfectly to squeeze even into tiny holes. They understand how simple mechanisms work. For example, they can unscrew a lid and they can interact with them. An octopus can mimic the color of its surroundings to blend in perfectly. They use tools to protect their homes. They learn by looking at other octopi. They play. And on top of that, the brains of some octopi are so developed that they have different personalities. So, if an octopus doesn't like someone, it'll be angry at them for a long time because they're pretty spiteful. Now, remember, we're talking about cephalopod mollusks, which live only a couple of years. Primates, dolphins, elephants, parrots, and other smart creatures can live for decades. It makes sense that they've developed long-term memory, a bunch of different brain features, and the ability to remember their enemies. But why would an octopus need all that? No idea. Want to learn something even stranger? Two-thirds of an octopus' neurons are spread throughout its body, distributed between its tentacles. Most of its brain is literally in its feet. Moreover, these neurons can make separate decisions without asking permission from the headquarters. When an octopus's suction cups receive information from the environment, the neurons and limbs can process the information and trigger a certain action. At the same time, the tentacles reject each other so that the mollusk doesn't accidentally get tied into a knot. Not to mention the fact that they may well exist without the octopus itself. Wow, I think I should make a whole video about these creatures. But back to our question, animals cannot pass an IQ test, and it's extremely difficult to find a single way to measure the intelligence of such different species as parrots and octopi. Scientists have to do it somehow, and sometimes they do something like this. Octopus's brain, eight. Parrot's brain, three. Yes, since you can't determine intelligence using brain volume and weight, you can just look at the animal's abilities. If you think about it, this is a very simple way to do it. But why then is there still no single top 10 of genius animals? Well, animals are not machines that all work in the same way. All creatures on the planet, from ants to elephants, make their own decisions, and they surprise us all the time. It's pretty hard to tell if we witnessed an isolated incident or are seeing a typical behavior for an entire species. For example, Hoover is known as the only seal capable of speaking English. He lived among humans for a long time and at some point decided that it would be fun to speak like us. Honestly, I'm not sure he did it on purpose, but Hoover did talk like a human being. In fact, he sounded like a grumpy uncle. And there are some similar and very unexpected stories. For example, some young elephants learn to put mud on their bells to keep them from ringing and avoid waking up people when they stole bananas at night. Usually when we talk about elephant intelligence, we think of their ability for teamwork and empathy, not about their banana stealth mode. What you're seeing is that the elephants are thinking about cooperation. It actually demonstrates how smart and how well adapted these animals are. Basically, elephants are large animals with large brains and lots of neurons. According to some reports, their brain can weigh more than 11 pounds. But as I said at the beginning, that doesn't make much of a difference. On the contrary, big brains have a big disadvantage. Almost all of its owners go extinct. There are several reasons, of course, but one of them is reproduction. Animals with larger brains have longer pregnancies and their offspring require more attention. This means that large mammals take longer to reproduce, and they usually produce fewer offspring at a time. For example, a female gorilla on average takes care of her infant almost continuously for the first three years of its life, but gives birth only once every three or four years. Now, remember how fast mice reproduce and in which quantities. Longer gestation and nursing periods also mean that offspring are more likely to die before reaching maturity. Fewer adults mean fewer cubs and so on and so forth until the species ends up on the verge of extinction. And it seems that nature has pulled a similar trick before. It's believed that in the past, a big brain probably helped humans adapt to changes in the environment. But you know who wouldn't agree with that? Neanderthals. Their brains were much larger than those of modern humans, and that didn't help them avoid extinction because size and weight don't matter. Nature is not going to give you a large brain unless it's absolutely necessary. But you know what? I've been talking too much about animals with big brains and different skills. However, the most interesting and stunning thing are the peculiarities of creatures that have no brains, like no brains at all. Not so long ago, 
I did a video about carnivorous plants. They're very cool and everything, but they are definitely not animals. However, they can count. To save extra energy of Venus flytrap, as the math and snapshot, only after being touched twice. The enzymes necessary for digestion are released after the insect has touched the plant for the third or fourth time, and the process of absorbing nutrients starts after the fifth contact, and all of this without a brain. Another plant, Cornish Mallow, somehow knows exactly on which side the sun will rise at dawn and turns its leaves toward it in advance. That is, it literally makes plans for the future. The only animals without brains are some small creatures and the jellyfish. During the day, the upside down jellyfish pulses about once a second, but at night its pulsation slows down by about 30%. And it's like, like it's asleep, sleep in a brainless creature. If jellyfish are disturbed while resting, they become less active the next day because there's no coffee in the sea. Sounds pretty unrealistic for creatures with no brain, am I right? But which animal is the smartest? Chimpanzees have perfect memory, social skills, and the ability to use tools and communicate using sign language. Elephants are able to cooperate and empathize, parrots can talk like a human and even understand what they're talking about. Octopi are able to learn, are vindictive and think with their tentacles. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I think primates are the smartest again. I wouldn't be surprised if they soon evolve into another dominant species and take our jobs away from us. So start developing your memory skills now. See you later.